one of the core stats in Dungeons and Dragons is Charisma. Charisma has a lot of gameplay importance. For some classes, it acts as a spell modifier, and for some spells, it is the save that a character needs to make in order to avoid some very bad effects. Charisma is important, but when it comes to developing a character's personality, their charisma and their ability to charm and influence people with their speech is very important when you're roleplaying. And I think a lot of people misinterpret what charisma means and limit themselves when it comes to giving their charismatic character personality. Basically what I'm saying is, you might be playing charisma wrong. Is that a clickbait title? Yes. I'm not trying to say that if you play charisma a certain way, you're doing it wrong. I am saying, however, that there are multiple ways to play charisma, and a lot of people are missing out on the diverse and interesting cast of charismatic characters you could be making. So, today, let's get into how to play a charismatic character. Okay. When you're thinking charisma, often what people think of is Tony Stark from the MCU, Iron Man. He is a very charismatic character. I mean, if I think of someone charismatic, that is a very, very, very good example. Tony Stark is charming. He's funny. He's very good with people. He's an excellent speaker who can influence people with his speech. He is a charismatic character. However, I find that a lot of people limit themselves into playing a character that is like Tony Stark, charming, funny, etc. However, charisma I don't think should be limited just to that. That is one way to play a charismatic character, but it's just that one way. Tony Stark's brand of charisma is really fun, but there are many different ways to play a charismatic character. So, what else do I mean? Well, let's continue looking at the MCU. Captain America. Captain America is also a very charismatic character, just not in the same way as Tony Stark. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Captain America can be really awkward. In the first Avengers movie, he's the fish out of water. He's the complete opposite of a charismatic character. Well, yes, that's true, and that gets into one of my points. No character is charismatic all the time. We were talking about Tony Stark earlier. Tony Stark is a very charismatic person. He's very charming and funny, etc., but he's not always like that. In the third Iron Man movie, he is very vulnerable, and his charisma drops off thanks to PTSD. Charisma isn't something that you just turn on and turn off. It isn't something that you control. A lot of people are charismatic in certain environments. In the first Avengers movie, Steve Rogers, aka Captain America, was the fish out of water. He wasn't very charismatic, he was kind of bumbling and awkward at times, but when you get to Captain America and Winter Soldier, when Steve has to give a speech to S.H.I.E.L.D. about Hydra infiltrating their organization, he falls right back into the zone. I know I'm asking a lot. But the price of freedom is high. It always has been. And it's a price I'm willing to pay. And if I'm the only one, then so be it. But I'm willing to bet I'm not. When you are making your D&D &D character, remember that charisma is often situational. It depends on where your character is. Look at your character's background and figure out where would this character be super comfortable. Now, of course, a character with very high charisma will be comfortable in a great amount of situations. Tony Stark retains his charisma for the vast majority of the series. It only drops off in specific situations. So if you have a character with high charisma, instead of figuring out the places where they are comfortable, figure out places where they aren't comfortable. It can create a very dynamic and interesting character. Another character that perfectly embodies the situational charisma is Princess Azula from Avatar. Azula is very confident in a leadership role. She has incredibly high charisma. In fact, she embodies intimidation specifically, though we'll go over how those stats can be played out in game in varying ways in the next point. Anyway, back to what we're talking about. Azula is incredibly confident in military leadership roles. 
but when she's put in a situation like a high school party, she is immediately hit with an awkward personality. That's a sharp outfit, Chan. Careful, you could puncture the hull of an Empire-class Fire Nation battleship, leaving thousands to drown at sea. Because it's so sharp. This isn't character inconsistency, it's just more depth to who Azula is. When you're role-playing out, again, look at what your character is good at, at what your character is bad at, look at their backstory, look at where they would be comfortable and where they would be uncomfortable. If you're playing a low charisma character, this is a tip that actually works for you. This doesn't just apply to characters with very high charisma. If you're playing an awkward, bumbling character, maybe figure out a place where they're not awkward and bumbling. A lot of people have a safe spot, an area of expertise where they are incredibly confident and in control. Even if your character has only 10 charisma, maybe there's a very specific situation where they have more force of personality. Let's take a look at another property with a lot of charismatic people, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is filled with political players with very high charisma. All of them play charisma very, very differently. Charisma affects multiple stats in your repertoire, persuasion, deception, intimidation. And we're gonna use Game of Thrones to take a look at how charisma can focus on one or more of these traits, starting with Littlefinger. Littlefinger is one of the most charismatic people in Game of Thrones, and he illustrates that when you're charismatic, charming isn't always the aim of the game. In the show, at least, Littlefinger can come off as very creepy, but people always listen to what he has to say, not just because of his charisma, but also because of his intelligence, which factors into other stats in Dungeons and Dragons. But we'll focus on charisma here. Littlefinger has a very strong force of personality. What does that mean? It doesn't necessarily mean that he's good at making people like him. In fact, show Littlefinger is quite unlikable. People historically do not like him. He has a reputation for being deceptive and unlikable. But thanks to his strong force of personality, he manages to weasel his way into conversation and deceive people into doing what he wants. In fact, he's so good at this that when someone finally says, I don't believe you, it actually kind of surprises him. This plays greatly into those modifiers. Intimidation, persuasion, and deception. Littlefinger, on the surface, seems like a guy who only deceives, but that's kind of the backdrop. He also engages in a lot of persuasion. Sometimes he will use the truth to persuade someone to do what he wants, rather than trying to deceive him. Take this scene between Littlefinger and Tywin Lannister. Littlefinger doesn't lie here. After the Lannisters and the Starks, the Tyrells command the largest host. Their lands are the most fertile in the Seven Kingdoms, feeding horses and soldiers. Yes, yes, yes. The Tyrells have not yet declared for any of the surviving kings. Loras wants revenge. He blames Stannis for Renly's death. And Marjorie... Mm. Wants to be queen. Yes, she does. Everything he said is true. He's trying to persuade. But it's not like the speech Captain America gave at S.H.I.E.L.D. That was another persuasive speech, but it was more on the inspiring side. Littlefinger's speech to Tywin Lannister about convincing him to use the Tyrell army is way more almost disturbing, Machiavellian. It's got a completely different tone. Those modifiers that are affected by charisma, deception, persuasion, and intimidation can all be played in very, very, very different ways. It's all about the tone of your roleplay. It seems like deception would be a thing exclusive to Littlefinger, but he can also use persuasion and intimidation as well, backdropped by his Machiavellian personality. All right, I think we've covered how varied charismatic characters can be, and role-playing charisma can be incredibly dynamic. That's been established. So, what's next? Well, using that charisma in the game. And here's what I mean. It's not just bouncing off of NPCs, but also bouncing off of other player characters. Even quiet characters are great for charismatic, 
talkative players and player characters. You should absolutely include quieter characters when you are role-playing a high charisma person. Why? Well, because no matter what, someone with high charisma would absolutely include someone on the quieter end. Why? Well, the reasons would vary. It depends on the type of character you're playing. If you're playing a more Captain America character, it could be because they're worried or they're trying to inspire. If you're playing a more Littlefinger-style Machiavellian protagonist, then it would be because they want to take advantage, possibly, of a quieter, more nervous type. On top of making sense from a character standpoint, it's also just a good habit. You can use your charismatic character as a vehicle to engage and allow in other people who might be playing more quiet at the game, whether it's a quiet character or, more often, a quiet player. And that is Crispy's Guide to Charisma. I definitely didn't cover everything here, there is much more tips to be had. But I think this is enough for you to chew on so that you can get a sense of how to play someone a bit more charismatic. If you enjoyed this episode of Tabletop Tavern Tips and you want to let me know, then please do hit that like button. If you want to see more episodes of this series as well as my other content, then please do subscribe to Crispy's Tavern. If you want to leave your own thoughts, then go down to the comments down below. In essence, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all next time. Farewell.